So here's installment four. I bet you didn't know this about the Jaguar XF. So if you go to page 233 in your Jaguar XF's manual, you'll see that they tell you where the fuse boxes are located. Now they show you that there's one over there, there's one over there in the footwell, one in the engine compartment, and there's one in the trunk. Now the one that's in the engine compartment that is where you're going to find this handy little fuse grabber but I honestly don't know why they didn't put it inside the car. Can't understand that. So there's the engine box location, there's the footwell location and there is the location of the one in your trunk. To get to the one in the engine you've got to undo this cover and underneath that you'll find yet another cover and that you've got to take off. It's got some clips there, there, there and there and then you can just lift it out of place. Now if you've watched my previous video on hardwiring the dash cam to your car you'll have seen me work on the fuse box location down here in the footwell. So that one is situated down there. So if you drive a left-hand drive car your fuse box will actually be in the passenger side and in my case it's on the driver's side because my car is right-hand drive. On page 235 they give you a really handy description of where the fuses are sitting. So this is the one in the engine compartment, this is the one in the passenger compartment and this is the one in your trunk. And if you turn to page 236 you'll get a list of what each fuse actually means. And on your driver's side you've got a sticker that gives you the correct tire pressures for your tires. In addition to your tire pressure placard on your B pillar, Jaguar also recommend that you pump your pressures a little higher and you would have seen on that placard that it said if you're doing speeds up to 100 miles per hour then you should keep the tire pressures at 2.1 bar. Um, if you're doing more than 100 miles per hour for a lengthy period of time then you should keep your tires pumped up at 2.3 bar. Now as a rule I just generally keep my tires at 2.3 that just avoids uh, any flat spots because I don't use the car every day and sometimes the car can stand for up to four or five days. So um, to avoid any flat spots in your tires temporarily um, just pump them up to 2.3. Now should you be in the unfortunate position of having had an accident you can see that Jaguar recommend that the car be put on a flatbed and not towed either by the rear wheels or the front wheels. And in order to tow your car they do recommend that you select the EPR which is the emergency park release. Now the emergency park release is actually situated right here in the middle of your center console. So I'm gonna take this off for you guys and show you what it looks like. It's a bit of a fuss to get it out initially and that is where you will find your EPR. So this is the emergency park release and you need a screwdriver um, to turn this anti-clockwise. You'll turn it this way, tramp the foot brake and then you'll pull this cable here and that will actually release the em emergency park brake on the transmission. And if you turn this thing over this is actually how it fits in, the, in, in the place with this section facing forward and you've basically got a clip there and a clip over there with two guiding, well three guide pins and those three guide pins go in these holes over there and to put this back you just simply clip it in place and push down and you're done. And they give you some diagrams here on what to do. Using a flat bladed screwdriver turn the locking device 90 degrees counterclockwise, apply the foot brake, use the strap to pull the EPR lever upwards until it latches in the vertical position. And there you can see what it'll do. Okay, 
and when the EPR is activated, the Jaguar drive selector will remain in P, but the selector indicator and the gear display in the message center will both flash N if the ignition is on to indicate that EPR is active. So when the vehicle transportation has been completed, EPR should be cancelled to allow park to be re-engaged. So you basically just have to do the opposite of what you did and then push that lever back down and put your little strap in place. So I bet you didn't know that your XF has a hidden menu. If you go to navigation and you press your finger at the top in the gray area and you just hold it there for a few seconds. It'll ask you to enter a PIN code and the PIN is 660. So what you got here is parts information, color bar, vehicle sensor, loading, diagnostic recorder, car configuration, microphone and voice output check. Now parts information just says navigation info, denso, color bar is check that the colors are displayed correctly and vehicle sensor, I don't know what that is, uh, it says reset if you can. Relative bearing, I think that is the sat-nav sensor. Loading, I don't know what that is. Load problem, nope. And diagnostic recorder, I guess if you want to record something while diagnosing a problem with the car. Uh, car configuration, it's UK English, 12 hours unit time. Unit distance is kilometers, so I guess you can change that to miles per hour. Microphone, microphone level, so this is where you can set the microphone level and voice output check normal on max so adpcm now, i don't know what that means uh, but anyway that's the hidden menu on your xf and you just press the back bar and it'll take you back to uh, your main screen thank you for watching please subscribe and share